On Sunday, I preached through 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. And as we read through the text, we read through verse 3, where Paul mentions that believers will judge angels. But we didn't have time to get into that in depth, and so I wanted to take a couple minutes now to discuss this idea with you. The first question to ask ourselves is which angels is Paul talking about? Fallen angels or holy angels? Well, in the case of fallen angels, we know from 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and Jude 6 that God stands in judgment of the fallen angels and will judge them. Scripture does not tell us if we as believers have any part to play in that judgment or not. It doesn't say we don't or that we do. But the Bible does tell us that we will participate in ruling along with Jesus Christ, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Notice there are other kings and lords mentioned. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There, will be, there are many rulers and there will be other rulers even in the new heaven and the new earth. To understand this, we have to go back to Genesis. And remember that redemption that we read about in Revelation, that we look forward to in the new heaven and the new earth, is really a reconciliation of the fallen world to Christ. A redemption of the fallen world to Christ. So that which was good and perfect when God created it is what Jesus is recreating in the new heaven and the new earth. What he's reconciling to himself. So in our initial mandate, God told us to rule over creation. He made us in his image to subdue and have dominion over the earth, over creation. And so that mandate still stands. And those of us who are found in Christ, who are believers, who are Christians, have a role to play along with Christ Jesus under his leadership in ruling over the new heaven and the new earth, ruling over creation, having dominion in eternity. So as a part of ruling with him, we don't exactly know what that looks like. We know that someone will sit on his right and on his left, but we don't know who those people are. We know the disciples had a discussion about this in the New Testament. So I think that we may have some role to play in the judgment of the fallen angels, but we may not. But what about the righteous angels? Well, they don't need to be judged. There's no condemnation. They're sinless. They're holy. But the word for judge used here in the Greek that Paul uses can also mean to rule over or to govern. Now, because we are found in Christ Jesus and he is set above all of creation and is king of kings, and we are in him part of his body, we are, he is the firstborn among us. So in Christ, we are also above all of creation, above fallen humanity, and even above the angels. So in that way, it seems logical that in the new heaven and the new earth, the holy angels will have a role to play in that new creation. And that we, as we rule with Christ, will have a role over them, overseeing their work in the new creation. Now, this is not something for us to be dogmatic about, as it's not something that Paul went into any great detail about. What's important is that we understand Paul's meaning and his main intention here. So I think it's very interesting to look at what he meant and what it may mean for our future. But the most important thing for us to remember and to understand is his intent here in 1 Corinthians 6, which is to remind us, point out to us, rebuke us for taking disagreements and division that happens in the church outside the church to unbelievers. He's saying that Christians are going to have this role of oversight, of governing, of judging the world. That we're being found in Christ and we have His holy wisdom, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us as we oversee creation. And yet we would take our disagreements and our, our division and we go to those who are not being entrusted with that, who are not found in Christ, who will not have a place in the new creation, the new heaven, the new earth, that's completely inappropriate. Let me give you a couple of examples that helps to illustrate this. Imagine a judge who has a moral dilemma, trying to decide what's right or wrong in a case, and he goes to a group of convicts, of inmates, of prisoners, and asks them for their opinion on what would be moral in another case. Oh, we would say that's foolishness. This judge has been trained and is considered hopefully righteous, as much as, as righteous as any human can be, and, and has been entrusted by the people 
or by a governor or a king with, with the role of judging, and yet for him to go to convicts who have been found guilty of breaking the law, of being immoral, and looking for them to help him judge another situation is foolish and completely inappropriate. And that's what Paul's saying we're doing. We are being set up as judges by the king of kings. He has selected us, chosen us, out of the world, training us by his spirit, and yet these little issues that come up in the church, if we can't handle them, if we can't handle the disagreements, if we have permanent division and breaking up in the church because of this, well, there's something completely wrong with that. And if we begin to go to the outside world, to the unbelievers, well, it's foolishness and inappropriate. Let me give you a second example. Imagine two parents, a husband and a wife, who are disagreeing with one another, who are having a fight. And they go to their young children, and they ask their young children, Tell us, who is right, mommy or daddy? Well, that would be completely unheard of. They are above their children. They should be the ones that have greater wisdom in helping their children sort out moral dilemmas and disagreements. Not the children helping the parents, but for them as parents to put themselves beneath their children, to put their children above them and let their children sit in judgment over mother and father would be, again, completely inappropriate. Yet that's what we do as Christians when we take our disagreements to secular law courts or even a pagans to help sort out our differences and disagreements. It's completely inappropriate. The main thing I want you to take away from all of this is this. As a Christian, you should not be taking your problems to the outside world, but rather you should be taking solutions to the world. Think about it. You've received Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. You have the answer to life's biggest questions. Ultimately, you have the important answers to all of life's hardest questions. You see, in Christ and through His Scriptures and through the Holy Spirit, you're given responsibility to be able to rule over. Not to rule over so that you can oppress, but to rule over so you can empower. So you can set the captives free. So that you can be a part of redeeming this world and reconciling it and helping it to come under the rule of God's kingdom. And so we're called not to be taking our problems to the world, but be taking God's solutions to the world. And so I want to challenge you. In whatever sphere of influence you find yourself in, whether it's at your job or in your family, in your community, or some other area, don't be the person that brings more problems into the situation, but be a person who brings solutions into the situation based on godly wisdom, for the glory of God and for the furtherance of His kingdom. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you all.